Greetings and salutations. JC here with a video. And today we're going to talk about this little box. This is called the Vinyl Liberator. And I had this custom made for me by an engineer named Edgar Green. And I'm going to tell you about Edgar. I'm going to tell you about this box. But before we get into that, a couple of notes. First of all, it is very obvious by the sound of my voice, I am still fighting the cold. I am liable to launch off in a coughing fit. If I do, I apologize in advance. Unless it's a really bad one, I won't stop the video. The other thing is, is that I had a giant zit pop up on my forehead today. And it's so big that I think I'm going to name it and keep it as a pet. So, no, I will not lean in for a close-up. I'm not going to do it. I'm just telling you that if you see something up there, that's what it is. 40-something years old and I get a zit. It's stress, man. It's stress. I'm moving in three days. Uh, speaking of the move, everything's going along peachy keen. It looks like that I will probably be offline for a very short period of time, probably a couple of days, but it might go longer. I've been getting a lot of traffic on my comments lately, and if I miss your comment and I don't answer, I'll catch up with it later. I'm not deleting anything, but if I miss you, I apologize. It just promises to be a real topsy-turvy couple of weeks coming here, and um, so that's that. All right. Um, why am I making this video and just showing you this now? I've actually had this box for over a year. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is I did do a video about it, but I did it at another venue. Um, some of you who have been longtime subscribers to my channel may remember that I participated in another web media venture, which is now defunct. Um, so I'm going to redo the video. And I also want to talk about the individual features. What made me think of this was I've been having a dialogue with a guy named Seth here on YouTube. And... Uh, uh, through the comments and through the messages and he's just this young guy and he's an audio animal and he's been asking me some questions about turntables and cartridges and things he's got a very unique thing going on uh, with his audio setup and um, uh, you know he, he wants to do it right and I'm you know I'm just trying to guide him along a little bit here and there and he asked me a question today uh, in a message that really got me thinking he said is it worth it to buy a cartridge that is designed to play mono records only. And yes, they do exist. They're on the market, you can buy them. And they're usually rather expensive. They're very boutique. Uh, some of them have one mil styluses on them, which are designed to play the original mono uh, long play records and 45s that were made in the 50s before stereo came along. And um, people who are avid, really early LP and 45 collectors like to have them to be able to play the albums uh, because it is true that you will get a better sound from a cartridge that only is designed to play mono than playing a mono record on a stereo cartridge even though a stereo cartridge can't and I told him I said no I said I'll tell you the truth this is my opinion if I had 3,000 albums that were all early 50s mono jazz albums and a whole bunch of 45s that were made before 1965, I would consider having that. However, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, first of all, these cartridges, if they have a stylus on them that is one mil across, you cannot play a stereo record on it at all. Now, Denon makes a cartridge that is dedicated to mono that has a 0.7 mil stylus. You can play anything you want on it. You can play... Uh, you know, stereo records, of course you get a mono sound off the stereo records, but they don't damage the record. But cartridges that are designed to play the older records with the one mil groove, if you play it once with one of those cartridges, a stereo record, you will rip the grooves out of it. It will never play the same again. You don't get, it's not something that you can do even once. It'll do it. Uh, it's just because you're trying, you got a groove that's this big and you got a stylus that's huge, it's like a ball, and it's just riding right up here on the edges and it rips the tops off of it, okay? That's what it does if my hand was big enough like this. Okay, so you have to have the right size stylus. But playing a mono record, even one that was pressed before 1958, that was for the one mil with a stereo uh, stylus, gives you pretty good results. Now, at one point in the 60s, even though they were making 45s and uh, that were still in mono. Most 45s up to 1970 were mono. Most of you know that. And then after that, they started issuing everything in stereo or most everything. Uh, but a lot of those records that were recorded in mono were actually done on stereo lathes 
It's just they combined the channels together to get a mono signal, and they said it was a mono record. So if you played it with an old stylus, that one mil stylus, you ripped the tops out of those grooves just as bad as you did a stereo record. Because uh, the, record manu the record player manufacturers by the late 60s, even if the turntable was mono, they would put a cartridge in it that could play a stereo record. Um, so it's, that's a long story. But there are collectors out there who just swear that, you know, they, they have a turntable set up to play uh, records that are mono, and it has a mono cartridge on it. For my use through the years, all you got to do to get the, the almost the same sound is to combine the two stereo channels. You put them in mono. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this, uh, pre this little amplifier here. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you each feature, and uh, some of them were ones that I specifically asked for, and um, I'm going to really get into detail about each one. Okay, so let's look at the front of the box first. Now, my uh, update rate on my preview here on my computer screen is about once every second, so give me a second. Don't, don't be too upset if it's not centered or focused. On this side, we have a mono stereo switch. When it's down, it's in stereo. When it's up, she's in mono. Okay, on this side we have a high cut switch. What this does is is it modifies the equalizer to de-emphasize everything above 10,000 cycles. And the reason why that is there is because if you have a record that was recorded in the early 50s or the 40s, there's nothing on those records above 10,000 cycles. It just ain't there. If you have some surface noise on that record, then um, if you can de-emphasize that high end a little bit, uh, especially above 10,000, makes it a more pleasant listening experience. I'm talking about like old Mills Brothers or uh, Glenn Miller, uh, early issues, LPs, 45s, things like that. Um, so I had him put that in there because that's a nice thing to have when you're listening to those sorts of records. And even a modern record, if it's particularly noisy, you know, like one that's really worn, you can turn that off and yeah you lose a lot of the high end but it, it don't you know bother you quite as much so those are the front panel controls and there's a there's of course there's a little power light here to let you know it's on there's no power switch on the unit let's go to the back we'll look at the inputs and outputs here on this side over here uh, we have the audio output which is a 1 8 inch stereo uh, plug and that was done to save space in the box there's a lot of electronics in here which is fine with me because all it takes is a cable with a 1 8 on one end and two RCAs on the other to plug it into anything you want. Or you can just use a 1 8 to 1 8 stereo and put it right in the computer. Down here is the power in and it is a specially built power supply that Edgar did and um, he put that in there. Alright and on this side uh, over here we have the inputs for the audio right and left RCA jacks, that's where you plug your turntable in. And in the middle, this big alligator clip you see right here is how you ground the turntable. And it was a pretty good idea to put this on here because if you have a um, grounded, uh, a turntable with a ground wire that has a spade lug on it, or maybe it's just a piece of bare wire, either one, you can get a good solid connection and you don't have to worry about it popping off. And you don't have to worry about ruining the spade lug or jamming the screw or anything. It's, 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 it's a good idea. We're not done yet, kids. On the bottom of this thing, this was the big thing that I wanted Edgar to do, is a couple of gain controls for the right and left channel. Now, what these do is, is they allow you to balance the cartridge. There are no magnetic cartridges anywhere that are exactly balanced for the power they put out for the right and left channel. you got to think. The flux of the magnets might be different. Uh, the coils might be a little less sensitive on one side or the other. So they vary back and forth. Some cartridges, really cheap cartridges, can be really out of balance. You've got to watch out for that. However, with this box, you can balance the cartridge. And when I had him put these gain controls on here, I had them put in a very specific place on the, in the circuit. The audio comes in through the back. It goes into the amplifier first, and uh, then the next thing is the de-emphasis. And I think that's the order it goes. Edgar, if I'm getting this wrong, I'm sorry. But the gain controls 
are actually after the uh, they're actually after the first stage of amplification. This is a two stage amplifier, and they affect the second stage. So that means that you're just you're adjusting the power stage of the amplifier when you adjust that. And the mono stereo switch on the front is actually wired in after these gain controls. So the mono that you get here is when you mix these channels, you get them perfectly balanced. And then when you put, you can throw it in mono, get a mono record, put a pair of headphones on, switch back and forth, keep tweaking until you get those channels perfectly balanced and you know that cartridge is perfectly balanced. There's a reason why I had him put the mono stereo switch after the gain controls because I want to feed the part of the circuit that combines the audio to mono with as equal a, a, a signal from right and left as possible. Now why is that? Well, most of the noise that you hear on a stereo record is called vertical noise. And vertical noise comes from the fact that a mono record is got a groove on it with a stylus that comes down this way. That stylus goes back and forth like this. The audio information, we're talking about one channel, is stored in the side-to-side -side motion of that groove. You understand that? That's, that's called lateral recording. There's another way to record on a record, and that's called vertical recording. And the original Edison uh, phonograph and every phonograph he built after that was vertical. He liked vertical. Vertical recording means that the, the, the recording stylus goes up and down and cuts a hill and dale in the record. For several reasons, lateral is the way to go for commercial records that are pressed. However, they had to figure out a way when the, stere the idea of stereo came along in the 50s, they had to figure out a way to do it. And a lot of people tried different ideas, and what they came up with was a system called the 4545 system, which was actually a system that an engineer at EMI Recording in London had come up with back in the 30s. The problem was that nobody was interested in stereo in the 30s except for the folks at Bell Labs who were working on it. And the other thing was is that the records and the equipment at the time couldn't, couldn't reproduce it, so it kind of got pushed to the side. So when they were trying to figure out how to get a stereo sound into a single groove, they went back to what's called the 4545 system. Now what does that mean? Basically what the 4545 system is, it is two vertical recordings up and down like this that we've twisted on their side and we're doing it with one stylus and we're doing it on the inner walls of the uh, and outer walls of the groove. The inner wall of the groove on the record, the one that points toward the spindle, is the left channel. The right channel is on the outer wall of the groove. Now this has a peculiar property. Remember, we're cutting this with one stylus. If we take our two channels, and here's where you might have a hard time following me. If we take our two channels and we flip-flop the phase of those channels before we record them, in other words, we've got two channels that have exactly the same thing in them, but they're, they're totally 180 degrees out of phase. And we feed that to a cutter head, and we have a coil over here on this side and a coil over here on this side. If you feed it a mono signal, it's going to do this. When one magnet pushes, the other one pulls. That's what we're talking about being out of phase. It will follow the pattern of the audio that way. It'll go back and forth. What do you end up with? You end up with a mono record. The only difference in the way that groove looks compared to the old laterally recorded records is the fact that because we're doing stereo, we're doing a smaller groove. That's it. Now, a stereo record, what happens is, is that let's say, uh, for instance, as you're looking at this, that this is the inner groove of the record, okay? And we are going to modulate just the left channel. So that stylus comes along and it cuts this groove going up and down this one doesn't move. The stereo cartridge, the way the magnets are picking up the vibrations from the one stylus, can actually um, discriminate between what's going on this way or this way. And that's how it separates right and left channels. And that's about the simplest I can put that. 
when you take a mono record that was recorded laterally, you put it on a stereo turntable, it will play and it will give you -da -da -da, a mono signal. Why? Because if we have a stylus that's going back and forth this way and it's recording a mono signal, what do we get? Each wall of the groove turns out to be a version of the same audio 180 degrees out of phase. A stereo cartridge can play a mono record. Here's the problem. And the reason why you can't play mono records on stereo doesn't have anything to do with the recording process, it's just stylus size. So you can have a mono cartridge that is just sensitive to lateral and you can play mono and stereo on it at the same time. That was a digression, I'm sorry about that, but I just wanted to point that out. Well, the problem is, is that the stereo cartridge will play the mono record, we know that. But all of the noise will be in stereo. If that record has any wear on it, it's going to be in stereo. So if we're sitting in front of a set of speakers, we'll hear our audio in the middle. All of the distortion from the wear on the record and the rumble that is inherent in uh, a stereo recording, it's going to be on either side of that and we're going to hear it. Our ears are going to notice it. But if we take a stereo cartridge, we make sure that both channels are balanced perfectly. And then we combine them using a switch like this, okay? What's going to happen is, is that all of that noise, which is 180 degrees out of phase, is gonna disappear, poof. A lot of it will go away because the noise is 180 degrees out of phase. The audio's not, but the noise is. So when we do that, it's like a balanced line. You've heard of balanced lines they use for microphones and in recording studios. That's what a recording, that's what it does. A balanced line has two wires in it and it sends the signal, one of them 180 degrees out of phase. Those are combined at the receiving end of the line and all of the noise, the hum and whatever that that wire picks up as it runs through the walls or across the stage, you know, you see people with microphones, that's what a balanced line is. That's what that means. They cancel out, they take the noise out. Well, the same thing happens with records. So if you have a large mono record collection, all you have to do is take your stereo cartridge and make sure that you combine it to mono. There's several ways to do this. You can have Edgar build you an amplifier. By the way, his YouTube channel is I'm Free 707. I'm gonna put it in the in the uh, in the show in the uh, description below so you can see. Uh, you can have Edgar build you one of these special preamplifiers. By the way, this thing sounds wonderful, and it's specially tuned for Audio Technica cartridges too. Thanks, Edgar. Uh, this does great, but it works great with anything. I've put Stanton, Shures, all kinds of things. Very fat, very clean sound. Love it. Anyway, uh, you can have one of these amplifiers built, or you can try and find one that has a feature. Or all you got to do is get you a Y adapter. Take the output from your turntable and put it into a Y adapter that combines it to one channel, and then get another Y adapter that you can plug into the Y adapter and on the other end have a couple of RCA plugs like this. Now, plug the wire that normally runs directly from your turntable into that Y adapter that's combining those channels. You'll get the same effect. Um, some receivers that were made in the 70s and 80s and 60s and 70s and 80s have mono stereo switches on the front of them. Many of them just control the, the FM radio on modern receivers, FM stereo or FM mono. But older receivers, and if you can find one, they have a mono stereo switch on them that actually monos out whatever input you put into the amplifier. It's very useful if you're dealing with a lot of vintage tape or a lot of old records because you just press the mono button and all that stereo noise disappears on your old 45s that are in mono. And it works for stereo records too. If, this, if you have a stereo record that's particularly tore up and noisy, <coughs> excuse me, try it in mono. Listen to it in mono, you'd be amazed at how much that noise just disappears. So anyhow, uh, it's, uh, there are some people, I have to say this before I wrap this up, I've read somewhere that some people do say that a true mono cartridge sounds a little bit better because of the way the coils interact, the, the impedances interact when you combine the output. Um, the truth of the matter is, like I said, you got 3,000 mono records and you want to be able to play them exactly the way they sounded in 1952, 
then get yourself a mono cartridge, set you up, set yourself up a turntable. For the rest of us that have maybe three or four of these in our collection, maybe maybe a hundred, you know, uh, or a bunch of old 45s, and we just want to get rid of the noise, mono stereo switch, high cut filter will do the trick every time. This once again is called the Vinyl Liberator. It was built by Edgar Green. And I'm going to put uh, Edgar's YouTube link down here. You can check out his channel. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Any questions or, or whatever, you know, send them on. Like I said, it may be a little while before I get back to you, but I'll try and get back to everyone. Thank you for watching. It's JC Wade.